Thank you. <laughs> so also a warm welcome from my side. I'm happy to present you today the digital agency concept and uh, the status of the transformation of the German tight agent organization. Let's jump directly on slide number four. And there you see how important it is for Germany to transform the tight agent network to the digital world. We have uh, more than 40% of our life business done with tight agents. We have almost 70% on the PNC side and even more than 70% on the health side. So we have to grow the tight agent channel. We have to transform the tight agent channel to the digital world so we can grow as Allianz in Germany. We started the transformation five years ago. It was 2011 with the concept Pro3. And Pro3 consists of several levers. One lever is the new, modern, interactive, needs-based sales approach. The other one was we launched a new CRM system where we support our agents to get in touch with our clients on a really regular basis. And the third one, which is really important, we worked on agency processes to free up time to get more time for agents for sales-related interactions and for sales-related services. So we are doing this rollout in groups of 800 to 1,000 salesmen. And we train and coach these salesmen for in a period of six to nine months. So this is really a huge change process to sustain the change and to sustain peak performance. So we do the next rollout group, or we will do the next rollout group and start it in the first quarter of 2017. So we will have more than 75% of our Tate agents in this program by the end of 2017. Pro3 is the core pro program to transfer the organization to a modern one in the offline world. On top of that, we started 2015 with our digital agency concept, with the clear goal to transform the tight agent network and make them ready and fit for the digital world. And we developed this format of the digital agency along the value chain of sales, starting from web presence and lead management. Then next, how is the sales process done and how does it look like and uh, what we have to be aware of in the after sales. Uh, process. Let's start with web presence and lead management. If you want to be successful in the online world, it's really necessary that you are really actively using social media. And, and also for an agent, it's important to have his individualized homepage. We have now almost 100% of our agents with homepages, with individualized homepages. And you have to use all contact channels. So we have to use something like WhatsApp, but we have to also build something like doing online appointments. So this is important to get in touch with not only your customers, it's very important to get in touch with prospects and with new customers. And then it's the advice part. And honestly speaking, from my point of view, this is moment of truth. So now you have contact with your prospect or with your customer. And then it's all about meeting and, or even better exceeding customer ex expectations. Therefore, we use this needs-based sales approach called ABP, Allianz Beratungsprozess in Germany, which you can use offline and very important, you can also use it online. And you, do, you can do online consultancy only if you use this needs-based sales approach. So you, uh, with this approach, you can convince your customers. We are also developing new tools like apps and stuff like this to engage the customer and the agent in the sales process. 
Um, later on, I will describe the concept of the digital specialist unit on uh, one of the next slides. Then we come to the after sales process. And the core of the after sales process is Mine Alliance. This is our service and communication platform between agents, customers, and Allianz. And with this platform, we can speed up the way how we communicate with our clients. And the other important point, Oliver mentioned it this morning, this is important to bring down costs for paper and postage costs and so on, because if you do the communication digitally, you don't have to send mailings or <coughs> producing letters. Another important point is uh, Birgit will, take, uh, will present you and familiarize you with the health app on something like this. This is important to increase the service also for our customers in the various lines of business, PNC, or the example will be on the health side. And I will give you a deep dive on online agency evaluation, which is a core thing for transforming the organization into the digital world. Let's start with web presence and lean management. In my point of view, it's all about increasing the visits and the traffic on our web pages. If I talk about web pages, I talk about Allianz DE, and I talk about the individualized home pages of agents. And there you see, if you compare the first three quarters of 2015 with the first three quarters of 2016, you see an increase of 50% or 66% on agency homepages, which in my point of view is really a very positive trend. How do you get there? First of all, you have to increase the, the direct type-ins, but you also have to invest in Google and you have to activate your organization to use social media. And I will provide you with the figures later on, but we have a really positive trend how many agents are now using social media. We have more than 3,000 agents using social media, and we reach more than 1.5 million persons on a weekly basis to get in contact with Allianz. And then, we launched two new things, which is really important in the offline world. And one important thing is agency selection. In the past, we had only this, let's say, focus on regionality. So we took the next one around the corner. Now we changed this. We launched a new algorithm, so we have a look what is the competency of the agent in the specific line of business. What is really core, a core thing. And the other one, what is important is how, how online, how, is, or how are the online capabilities of the agents. And now we bring these three things together and this, I would say, this is really best match. And uh, our figures show that this brings up the conversion ratio and this helps a lot for doing more on the sales side. The next point is we have to use all contact channels. If clients or prospects are familiar with using, for example, WhatsApp, we also have to use WhatsApp. So this is important to increase the traffic. Now let's have a look on the advice side. We started, as I mentioned before, from a very strong proposition in the offline world. So we have the highest coverage of all insurance companies in Germany in the offline world. We are nearly everywhere. So, and now we offer online consultancy via our agents. And uh, I share with you the figures. So we are still in the rollout phase, but we offered more than 70,000 online consultancy sessions in the last five months. My point of view, this is really a big number, and this shows how the agents are adopting to these new tools, and that there is really demand on customer side. And we round up this offer 
of the digital agency with a, this digital specialist unit. With this one, we are setting, in my point of view, really a new standard in the German market because we have special, specialists for complex business questions or complex situations. So in the past, the specialists were traveling to the agent and now he can connect, the agent can connect the specialists directly online. So for example, if you do something like a video consultancy session, you can bring in the specialist and then you don't do a dialogue, you do a kind of a trialogue. And the NPS is fantastic. So this is a tool where you can, or a setup where you can really exceed customer expectation and this helps a lot. And the other point is, this helps for efficiency and effectiveness because it brings down something like travel costs and so on and you can do more talks um, on a daily basis as a specialist. And also from a training perspective, this gives you a new opportunity for the future. Now let's have a look at after sales. I already explained how important Meine Allianz is for Allianz Germany. Now I want to introduce you online agency evaluation. The core of a tight agent organization is the trust base because everybody knows the agent in, in a rural area and they trust him. And now what can we do to transfer this trust base to the online world? And this is the solution, online agency evaluation, because clients can share their experience with the agents in reason of a service contact or it was a sales contact. And they like and they appreciate to share the information in the net. And what I like even more is the feedback they get, they give us. So uh, we are still in the rollout phase and the feedback on average is between 4.8 and 4.9 on a scale from zero to five. And this is really gorgeous. And we see this is increases the traffic in the net, especially on agency homepages because new prospects and new clients, they want to go to successful agents uh, which get good fit feedback in the net. So now let's have a look at facts and figures. As I mentioned before, if, I have, if you have a look at agency homepages and the visits, and if you compare September last year with September this year, you see this dynamic trend. So we increased the visits by more than 150%. From a Google perspective, the visibility index is up more than 50%. We have now increased the number of agents who are using Facebook with a corporate website, and this is only Facebook. We increased it by almost 40% compared to 2015. And what I think is very impressive, last year we had something like 800,000 contacts on a weekly basis with people on social media social media, now we increase this to 1.5 million. And this is a really dynamic trend and I'm really optimistic that this will help us in the future to generate more growth. I al already talked about online advisory, which, which is a new proposition for our tight agent channel. With all these tools and instruments, we are outperforming the market in a very important KPI, this is con customer contact frequency, which is important for doing more business. So we increased it from 50% to 80% last year, and this shows that the whole concept is really working. On, on, on the right side of the slide, you see what is the effect on the customer satisfaction side. This I would say is really, really huge. So now your question is, how about the business? Now you see over the last three years, we increased productivity per agent by almost 20%. And you see the trend is picking up. 
So, and we are, as Oliver mentioned before, we are still in the rollout phase. This is more the beginning than the end. And this has a positive impact on all lines of business, PNC, life, and the health side. And so we are, for Germany, um, quite optimistic that this is the way how we can grow also the tight, engine, tight agent channel. Now I want to go more on the group perspective. So because as part of the renewal agenda, we started an initiative, how can we transform the strong tight agent channels in Europe together in this digital world? And so we started a project to share not only, or to share the tools, because if you, for example, develop a tool for online contact management or for doing online appointments, you can share this in Europe because the internet in Europe is almost the same. <laughs> so, but what is also important that we share how we do the change, because this is a huge change process. How do you transform a self-employed organization in the future? So we share the tools and we share the experiences. We work here closely together. And so I'm also on this side very optimistic that we are, will be successful transforming the organization to the digital world and make them fit for the future. Thanks for your attention. And now I'm ready for questions. And um, I will be also here in the coffee break or during lunch, so don't hesitate to approach me during lunch or coffee right. break. Thanks very much, Joachim. Any questions? Um, let's have Peter first here. Thank you very much. Uh, Peter Elliott from uh, Kepler Chevrolet. Um, you talked an awful lot about social media and the, the need to have that. Um, and I guess going back to uh, Solmaz's uh, presentation at the start, we heard that as well. We heard the example of the advert on Facebook, um, but where Facebook, it was Facebook's data that was used and Facebook kept the data. Um, so I'm just wondering whether, uh, what, what are we missing in terms of going back to the original concern that it was, you know, these, these players that could perhaps take ownership of the, the customer, um, if they're the first port of call and we're still using their data, you know, how, how do we get around that, that challenge? And perhaps if I can slip in a quick second one, um, the focus here was very much on moving sort of offline to online, but still using agents. Um, I guess going forward, the amount of time that agents have to spend will be reduced thanks to the various initiatives that we've heard. Is, is that a challenge given the size of uh, the, the number of agents you have? So these were two questions. First of all, I want to start with the last one. It's a question, what is the commission level for business which is generated online in connection with the agent? So we agreed on new, a new commission scheme for life, for, for, for health, and also for PNC. And actually, this is important if you have if you have more spendings for generating leads, then you have to lower the commission and find a new commission scheme. And we found one. And um, that's important because otherwise it's getting too expensive in, 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 in the online world. So this is a prerequisite for sure. And the important thing is if we talk about social media, it's important that you know all the social media activity is done by the agents. And this is the reason why we are so, so successful. So they are using their community and get in, they are getting in touch with prospects, with new customers, and so they can do their sales. And uh, this is really, really powerful. So they are more successful on the social media side than, in my point of view, we, we can be in the future. And this is a proposition of a tight agent network. And if you work also on the commission side, this will be also a very good deal for us as Allianz. I think Farouk was next. Yeah, over there, please. Uh, thank you very much. Farouk, Farouk Kenny from Credit Suisse. Um, are you getting different customers to your normal customer base through social media? Um, can you describe that? And is it ever going to be a different price through these different channels? Um, will it ever be cheaper in the future for you to, to buy through social media, interact that way, rather than pick up the phone or travel to visit an agent? Thanks. So if we talk about the blue brand, we have the same price if you 
buy it digital or if you buy it via the agent. And your question is, um, or, or your question was, how about the customer segments? Actually, yeah, and they are really different ones. <laughs> they are really different ones. They are younger ones. They are uh, more in the more in cities. But uh, as I mentioned before, we are still in the rollout phase, and um, maybe we can talk about this maybe next or uh, next year, or year later. Then I give you can give you more insights. But the first trends are younger customers and more from cities. Okay, I think uh, Michael first and then James here in the front. Thank you. Um, I work for a bank which um, I think has 30,000 people who are employed to control what I do, or not specifically what I do, but if you see what I mean. So what's the reputation or control risk? Because if you, or, or, effectively, a lot of the stuff which used to be very tightly controlled, you, you know, by mailings, etc., has now you've, you've kind of put it out there. How do you deal with that, or how do you see that? So, in my point of view, what we what we are controlling, so we are offering the tools and the components, and the agents are using our tools, so we can control this. So, we don't work with self developed stuff out there, so we allow agents to work with their own apps or stuff like this. So we develop the new tools regarding the digital agency. So, and therefore, in my point of view, we don't have a problem. We control these tools, and um, so we are well on track. Um, James and then Andrew. Ed, and we have a huge buy-in from the agency side. So this is now after three or four years of changing the organization, they buy in because they know we are better in developing these tools and they are good in customer interaction. This fits good together. Um, I, I Two quick questions, actually. Firstly, if memory serves, from 2011, you, when you, you first talked about the rollout of Pro3, um, and the Digital Agency 2.0, you had certain pilot studies that were targeting a, um, a, a or illustrated a, an improvement in productivity. I can't quite recall what that number was, but I'm interested to know what, whether you actually hit that target, you know, whether things didn't develop quite as, as you expected. And then my second question was just around the, I mean, if, if you look at what you're trying to do with the Digital Agency, it's very successful in Germany, the, the, the rollout in other markets is, is taking far longer, and it, and I think there are nuances to each individual market. To what extent has the target operating model and AMOS um, influenced your ability uh, to roll out this sort of appro standardized approach to, uh, to tied agency, particularly um, versus some of your larger peers? So first question was, uh, how about the targets of Pro3? So we were Three years ago, we were discussing this issue, and the goal was to improve productivity um, in the groups by something like 20%. So for this, we are well on track, because the figures I showed you are figures regarding the whole organization. So if I have a look at the groups, in the rollout groups, then we are well on track to reach the 20%. And now on top, we have positive effects regarding the digital agency. And your question, um, Amos, and what we do here is front-end development. These are really agile tools. They have nothing to do with back-end systems. And so we can share also this uh, with our European colleagues. And uh, this is agile, agile development. So it's well together. Okay, we take, um, sure. Questions I think we didn't fully answer. The first one was price differentiation. I think what Joachim was talking about, if you have this exact same product, it has to be consistent uh, uh, across channels. But we offer obviously different products online and uh, through other channels and even through Alsico and others that have different features and therefore have different prices. So the answer is yes. If you access different value propositions from Allianz, i.e., will you hear that from Leonardo later on Genial Click, which is a fully online product where you fully service yourself, 
you will obviously have a different cost structure and therefore a different price. So price differentiation at the end of the day, we need to think less about trying to avoid channel conflict, but rather value proposition differentials to say, if you as a client are ready to accept that you service yourself fully and that comes at a lower cost, it will come obviously also at a different price. So Allianz will differentiate and you have markets like Australia where we are having the same brand on all channels, but do differentiate depending of what the cost of the channel to serve is, what product features are, deductibles and so on. So the differentiation you will see, but it has to be consistent. And that I think is the biggest challenge we have today still, yeah, talking about, about challenges too, we shouldn't only talk about what's great, between the online and the offline world, because the online world is real time in terms of pricing mechanism, product design, and the offline world is still not. And we have to bring our, that's the next chapter, our agency forces and brokers into the online world where they have to get used to the fact that, for example, motor pricing is changing daily, sometimes by the minute, and then being comfortable with that in terms of explaining why that is and what the value proposition is. So that's the next step, but it will come. The second question was uh, agency transformation. So let's just put it into perspective. We have three large entities in Europe, Italy, France, Germany, that have sophisticated agency forces that serve retail and uh, increasingly commercial clients. It's very important to understand. And then you have, on top of that, the Iberian platform, which is more focused to retail and SME. And then you have Eastern Europe models that are smaller agencies. So we have a program and the large three are actually working in a consistent step forward as Joachim are describing that. Now, some of the historical re regulatory framework scales and models are different, but as you think about the modular product or the digital agency in Italy or what has happened in France, it's totally consistent to what Joachim was saying. Uh, the only, the emphasis is different. So for example, it's common for all of them that we operate more outside of big cities. This is why we're strong also in terms of profitability than we operate inside of big cities. So still working on how do we compete in larger cities. On the countryside, the modules are very consistent. What do we do on life and health? What do we do on motor? What do we do on commercial lines? The wording and the design might be different. The concepts of how we are bringing them into the digital world are very consistent. Last comment is, I think where Germany is in particularly strong, is something that Joachim hasn't actually mentioned, is the connection between digital and customer satisfaction and customer centricity. The, I think the most important change that I have seen is the introduction of the five-star rating system for our agents. We don't have the, uh, everybody yet on the system where clients are giving online feedback about the service quality of their agents to the public, and now the agencies are using that to advertise their services. So we are bringing in a customer satisfaction mindset and culture through the online world because of the five-star ratings. Now, does everybody have that yet? No, we don't have that yet, and we're forcing everybody to get into the system, and I can tell you, very long-term, very few agents will survive that do not have a five-star rating from their clients. So it's forcing the cultural transformation from a product push to a customer pull from the online world into the offline world. And I think that's very important to understand. Yeah? So digital is not just about moving offline to online, it's bringing online customer centricity to the offline world. Christoph? Uh, an additional comment on the on the platform question, uh, James. This is Germany, and Germany is a really good example how to implement this two-speed architecture. This is a good combination, and Germany is one of our forerunners. They are implementing our core platforms, and in parallel, the interaction layer, especially for those activities, for instance, be it online services, online consulting, the web pages, and, and, and. And exactly these modules are then the basis, or the, the platforms are then the basis for the transformation and the translation into other markets. Of course, then with a specific customization, if needed, to the local needs. Oliver mentioned the agency online evaluation after only three months. If you compare the agents using this tool compared with the other ones, 
the number of visits on the home page has tripled. This is only the beginning. So we are quite optimistic for the future. Thanks a lot and see you later.